Okay, so today I wanted to take you with me while I do a brake job on my Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. This is a 2016 model. Basically, what I'm going to be doing today is new rotors, new pads, and then what I'm going to do also is take off these calipers and paint them black. It's something I've been wanting to do since I got the truck. I'm not a big fan of the silver color. And then I was also having an issue with um, a little bit of steering wheel wobble um, when the brakes get hot. And these front rotors have some pretty good grooves in them. And so it really wasn't worth it to try and take it up to the dealership and get them to turn the rotors. So I just got new rotors. I did get better rotors. Um, so you'll see those. I'll lay the rotors out tell you what I got, why I got it, and then lay out the pads as well and show you those. But I just wanted to take you with me while I do it. It's not really a instructional video. I just wanted to show you because when I was looking to do a brake upgrade for my truck, I couldn't really find any videos on it for the most part, not for the newer trucks. So these rear ones really aren't bad, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace them anyway since I'm doing the fronts. So, um, you know, and these rear ones, they couldn't be turned anyways because I looked at this and it says the minimum thickness is 32.5 and they're at like 34. But they don't really need to be turned anyways because they're still pretty good shape. But, let's get started and uh, this is actually going to take me more than a day because I've got to paint these calipers, which is going to take a while. Got to take them off, clean them up real good. And then I'm going to paint them. So let's get started. Alright, so um, I wanted to give you an update. I got everything prepped and cleaned up. So I just wire wheeled um, all of them and then uh, kind of gave them a scrub with a Scotch Brite pad and some brake cleaner and then just kind of hosed them down with brake cleaner paint. And then I wiped them down with rubbing alcohol and then taped them up. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, paint them. I'll insert a picture here of the before and after of kind of what they looked like before and what they look like now. So the shiny silver color is kind of just the cast casting color whereas they had some coating on there before and some of it had started to fail especially on one caliper in particular but <clears throat> let me show you what paint I'm going to use basically what I'm going to do is do a three step, do a primer, do my color and then do a clear so I have this VHT high heat primer I have the VHT caliper paint this is satin black that was uh, shiny enough for me I um, didn't really want gloss and then I have this high heat VHT satin clear as well so that's what I'm going to be using to paint alright so got primer down on one side gotta wait till it's uh, dry to the touch before I flip them over uh, right now it's still pretty tacky so once that happens, we'll flip them over to the other side. Okay, so I have them flipped over and I did the um, primer coats on the underside. So what I'm going to do, um, oh, I guess I should mention, I let that sit overnight, uh, the primer. Um, this stuff has been a little bit difficult to work with. Um, I've been keeping the temperature in here around the mid 60s and so I'm sure maybe I can you can see it here when I lift this up but basically it's been sticking so I mean I'm, it says you know you can handle it within 10 minutes and uh, or dry to the touch in 10 minutes and you can handle it in 30 or whatever but somehow you're supposed to do all your coats within an hour which doesn't make any sense because I got to do more than one side and it's kind of hard to hang up these calipers because I'd have to have some kind of crazy system to do it because they're pretty heavy. 
But regardless, when it sticks, it's, it just pops off some of this paint like it's not sticking. And I don't know if that's going to hold true for the bottom here. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. What I'll do is, uh, I'm going to try a different technique where I'm going to put a piece of computer paper instead of this cardboard, put a piece of computer paper under there while I'm painting to see if, uh, you know, when it's time to flip, maybe it won't uh, take off any paint. But yeah, so let's get started. Got to flip all these over and we're going to get out the black paint. All right, so all my final coats are done on the calipers. So they're just drying now. Basically what I'm going to do is try and hopefully give them about 12 hours to sit to let them get as cured as possible before I install them on the truck. And uh, then what I'll do is get them cured a little bit more with the brakes, um, with braking and getting them hot up to higher temperatures. So that's something I'll work on once I get them installed, but I want them to be as dry as possible before I go and handle them. Uh, the size of these calibers are quite large. They're probably about, I'd say 10 to 12 inches wide so they're much bigger than like a car caliper since they're for a heavy duty truck so they're quite heavy to mess with but tomorrow I'm going to be putting these on my truck with the new rotors and pads and I'll show you which pads and rotors I chose. Alright so I wanted to show you the rotors that I chose these are made by EBC uh, these are the USR series rotors so they're just slotted and then they have this uh, black coating on them so I got a set for the front and the rear so they both match and this is basically a protective coating so it doesn't rust um, and then it'll wear off where the pads rub so I have a set for the front and for the rear and this truck has uh, the brakes are pretty much close to the same thing in the front and the back um, the piston size for the calipers are different um, and then the rotors back here in the back are just ever so slightly bigger. So these are like 14.2 inches and the front's like 14 inches. So let's look at the pads that I chose. Okay, so for the pads, I chose Hawk brake pads. And I got their Super Duty truck brake pads. These are supposed to be the best pads for trucks. So, um, yeah, I, I would have gone with the EBC ones, but the different... Um, pads they sell are painted you know like they got the green ones and red ones and yellow ones and orange ones and I didn't want that look um, seems kind of tacky to me I can understand them giving them funky names but I just want black brake pads um, so I went ahead and just chose the Hawk ones alright so I got the brackets and the calipers on with the pads all I have to do now is snug down the bolts on the back. I, I have two caliper bracket bolts and then two uh, recess bolts in here. Uh, I, I guess they're technically slide slide bolts, but um, yeah, there's two of these up here and two of those down there. So I got to tighten all those up, and then I have to hook up the brake line, and then I'm gonna go through the process of bleeding the brakes but yeah so that's the front black brakes all around in the rear that's the rear so I'm gonna keep moving along and I'll keep you updated okay so I've put a couple hundred miles on the truck um, you know with and without a trailer so I wanted to kind of give an update about the rotors and the brakes, um, the brake pads, you know, kind of what I think. So as you can see, 
they're wearing in and you can see the slots there and you can see where the black is still fresh and where the pad has worn it off and then over here to the caliper still looks pretty good all black so that's the rear up here at the front again we have the black caliper rotor you can see it's starting to wear in um, and the black coating so basically kind of what I wanted to talk about was the difference between stock and the upgraded and also kind of what I think um, so basically the Hawk brake pads are like a higher end brake pad as far as kind of more of a sport pad so when it's like really cold outside like in the like when I first get in the truck and it's about 40 degrees outside you know you kind of have you don't have as much kind of of a bite feel the truck still stops but it just doesn't bite quite like uh, you know uh, some other pads would that are kind of um, meant to have an initial bite even when it's cold these ones are different because they perform better when they're warm so as soon as you get them warmed up which which, which doesn't take that long all you have to do is drive down the road a little bit and then once they're warmed up and then when they get really hot they get you know better and when I say really hot I don't think that you know the pads they're probably not designed to get that hot they're probably kind of a pad that is more resistance more resistant to building heat which is kind of what I want because the truck by itself is not a big deal the truck weighs about 6,500 pounds which is heavy but these are some big brakes um, and with the brakes being the same size in the front and rear, uh, the only difference being that the piston size is a little bit smaller in the rears than in the fronts. So um, with that being said, when I'm pulling the trailer is when I kind of want it to be um, better. You know, because the brakes are going to get hotter quicker and they're going to stay hotter longer while you're constantly stopping a trailer that's anywhere up to, for this truck, anywhere up to 13,000 pounds. So that plus hopefully the, the higher quality rotors won't warp over time like the factory ones did. So the, this truck's only got 69,000 miles on it and I needed to replace the rotors. So that's basically my thoughts. Uh, I'm happy with the rotors, happy with the pads. Um, the pads are a little bit different, but again, the truck still stops even when they're cold. Um, but it does stop really well. I mean, this thing will throw you into the dash if you hit the brakes real hard. So, those are my thoughts. I think the only thing I kind of wish I could have done, uh, would have been stainless steel lines. I saw maybe like one brand that might have made stainless steel lines, but maybe that's something I can quickly upgrade in the future. It's just a quick swap. So I might see about that, but that's not really top priority right now. I basically just needed new brakes that weren't so, that weren't bad because the old ones caused some vibrations and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, leave me some comments um, and stay tuned for more videos. I've got more videos coming out for my car, putting, turning that into a drift car. It's a Nissan 350Z if that interests you. I'll have that at the end of the video. But other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.